Well, good evening. Great to have you all with us on our Sounds of the Season night as we get to share different talents and abilities in ways that God has blessed us and have a little fun together as we worship together and laugh together and uh, fellowship afterwards together. So make sure you stick around because if you don't, then Donna has to take all this food home and she says that she doesn't want to do that. And so we need all of you to help us out with that. Uh, but it's great to be able to gather together. Um, I want to begin with a word of prayer, and, uh, and as we do, I just want to lift one request that came to us tonight. Uh, Sherry said that it was her great-nephew uh, just suddenly passed away in a tragic way that she got word of, and so she's asked us to pray for her and, and for the family. And what's the last name of the family again? Ivy? Ivy? Okay. And so we're just going to lift them in prayer, uh, but let's just, uh, let's just go to the Father. Father God, I just thank you for being with us tonight. I thank you that we can gather to celebrate you, to have fun as a family, uh, to enjoy your presence and to enjoy the talents and abilities you've given to us as we worship you, look to you, laugh with you. Tonight, God, uh, while our hearts are, are joyous because of the season we're in, uh, our hearts are heavy for Sherry and her family at the same time. And so we just want to lift the Ivy family in particular and Sherry and the rest of the extended family to you. And we just pray your peace and comfort would rest on them during this difficult time of loss in their lives. Thank you for being the God who came into this world to bring peace into our lives and comfort and love and so much more. And so tonight we just pray that uh, you would be pleased with us as we celebrate you in different ways. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to begin with Scott. Would you come and share with us? All right, I'm going to share with you two songs that I've wrote. Um, if I can get it where I can see. <coughs> um, the first song is really a secular song, uh, if you'll excuse that. Um, I've entitled it, I'll Be Here for Christmas. And um, as opposed to I'll Be Home for Christmas, I wrote it with the idea in mind there's a lot of people that aren't actually home for Christmas. Um, people, people on a business trip, people in prison, um, people in the military that are overseas or just on a, f a base somewhere, and away from loved ones, away, f away from um, you know what they call home. But the truth is, we where we are is 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 also a place where we can celebrate Christmas. We always usually have friends and people around us. So the idea, that's what the idea of this song is. So. <clears throat> There's a place I'd like to be With a decked out Christmas tree I'm missing being home for Christmas Where there's joy and revelry With friends and family I just cannot be home this year I'll be here for Christmas With many as friends so far from home yet we are not alone that's all that matters in the end there are reindeer and a sleigh and a manger with some hay and baby Jesus on the front lawn there's a snowman welcome mat and a big red Santa hat I just can't wear that hat this year. Well, I'll be here for Christmas with many whom I regard as friends. So far from home, yet we are not alone. That's all that matters in the end. You and I 
can spend the holidays together. Fa la la la, fa la 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 la, ra pa pum pa pa pum pum. All the things we miss will reminisce, and with the melody and greenery, we'll ding along a Christmas song and celebrate a holiday and bring good cheer. There's a gift that I. By an artificial fire, these things remind us all of Christmas. Sugar cookies would be nice with some cider warm and spice, some twinkle lights and mistletoe. We'll all be here for Christmas with many whom we regard as friends. So far from home, yet we are not alone. That's all that matters in the end. I'll be here for Christmas. This song is, um, if, you, if you're familiar with uh, Catholic, a lot of Catholic services, they have uh, um, what they call the Magnificat. Um, when, well, we just, we're hearing about Elizabeth and Mary. Well, no, we didn't hear the quite there yet. But in the, in the story where um, Elizabeth and Mary get together, um, I believe, uh, Somebody's baby kicks. I don't know if it's John or Jesus. <laughs> but um, essentially, um, Mary in Scripture uh, th says these things. I've paraphrased, obviously, but um, this is um, Mary's Magnificat. And I call it, the title of it is Magnify the Lord. <clears throat> Time. 
guess I'm the designated MC. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> Donna usually does this job, but she's not feeling well, so <laughs> Kurt let me do it. So um, thank you, Scott. That was really, really great. Um, appreciate that. And now Marsha Green is going to do a scripture reading, and then right after Marsha is done, Bob is going to do a um, reading for us. So, yes, please. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea <coughs> to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. <coughs> An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone, shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. <coughs> so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. <clears throat> the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Her Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned of it in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned by route 
by to their country by another route. <coughs> For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Jesus, who being in very, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at that name of Jesus every knee should bow, <coughs> in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Do I have to? Yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> you got to. <laughs> it, it'll destroy my hand gesture. <laughs> Paul Harvey, a broadcaster on the radio for years, used to read this story every year at Christmas. It's called The Man and the Birds. And um, it says, um, unable to trace its proper um, par um, parentage, I have designated this as my Christmas story of the man and the birds. You know, the Christmas story, the God uh, born a man to a ma in a manger, and all that ex uh, escaped some modern, mostly I think, because they seek complex answers to their question, and this one is so utterly simple. So for the cynics and the skeptic and the unconvinced, I submit a modern parable. Now the man to whom I'm going to introduce you to was not a Scrooge. He was a kind, decent, mostly good man, generous to his family, upright in his dealings with other men. But he, didn't, he just didn't believe all that incarnation stuff which the church has proclaimed at Christmas. It just didn't make sense, and he was too honest to pretend otherwise. He just uh, didn't swallow the Jesus story about God coming to earth as a man. I'm truly sorry to upset you, he told his wife, but I'm not going with you to, the, to church this Christmas Eve. He said he felt like a hypocrite that he'd much rather just stay home, but that he would wait up for them. And so he stayed, and they went to midnight service. Shortly after the family drove away in the car, snow began to fall. He went to the window to watch the flurries getting heavier and heavier, and then went back to the, his fireside chair and began to read his newspaper. Minutes later, he was startled by a thumping sound. Then another and another. Sort of a thump or a thud. At first, he thought someone was, uh, must be throwing snowballs at the living room uh, window. But when he went to the front door to investigate, he found it was a flock of birds huddled miserably in the snow. 
They'd been caught in this storm and in a desperate search for shelter, they tried to fly through my large landscape window. Well, he just couldn't let the poor creatures lie there and freeze, so he remembered the barn where his children uh, stabled their pony. That would provide a warm shelter if they could direct the birds to it. Quickly, he put on a coat, boots, trampled through the deepening snow to the barn. He opened the doors wide and turned on the light, but the birds did not come in. <coughs> he found food. He figured, well, food would entice them. So he hurried back to the house, fetched some breadcrumbs, sprinkled them on the snow, making a trail to the yellow lighted wide open doors of the stable. But to his dismay, the birds ignored the breadcrumbs and they continued to flap around helplessly in the snow. He tried to catch them. He tried to shoo them into the barn by walking around them, waving his arms. Instead, they scattered in every direction except into the warm lighted barn. And then he realized that they were afraid of him. To them, he reasoned, I am a strange and terrifying creature. If I only could think of some way to let them know that they can trust me, that I am not uh, hurting, trying to hurt them, but that I'm going to help them. But how? Because he made, um, because any, any move he made tended to frighten them, confuse them. They just would not follow. They would not be led or shooed because they feared him. If only I could be a bird, he thought to himself, and merge with them and speak with their language. Then I could tell them not to be afraid. Then I could show them the way to a safe warm, to the warm barn. But I would have to be one of them so that they could see and hear and understand. At that moment, the church bells began to ring. The sound reached his ears above the sound of the wind. He stood there listening to the bells, listening to the bells peal the glad tidings of Christmas. Suddenly, he understood as he sank to his knees in the snow, asking God for forgiveness. Am I back on? Okay, thank you guys. Um, now uh, we're next. <laughs> um, and after we are finished, it will be Carol and Connie and Linda are going to come sing for us. So.
mom beat into us Jacob's oh. Ladder so that we could all learn our keys and our notes and how to blend together. I suggest we sing that tonight, but they didn't go for it. So. <laughs> you can go on the other side. Other side? Yeah, you need the mic. There's one. I don't know. Connie and I have big mouths. So anyway, we're going to sing What Child Is This? And if you feel free to sing along with us if you'd like. You notice I'm, not try I'm trying not to say a word. <laughs> she did enough when we were kids. She was the boss. We want to thank Scott for playing for Absolutely. us. So. And you have not rehearsed. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is going to be a joyful noise. Don't tell them. Oh, they'll find out. I'm having trouble cats. seeing, so I have to. Uh -uh. Shh. <laughs> No, no, I'm juggling you. Okay. You see how many words are? I'm having trouble. We'll share. You'll share a mic. I can, I can belt it. We hope we hit it. <laughs> I just want to say, you do not know what a miracle it is for me to be standing here being able to do this. I had COVID in January, and just now am able to do some of the normal things that people do. And, and I, I praise God. <laughs> Thank you. That was very nice. Um, okay, now Reba. Woodward has a story. There she is. She has a story for us. She's going to tell uh, the Christmas spider, the legend of the Christmas spider. And then after um, her story, Noelle and Ashley Frank are going to come and bless us with a song. Okay, to kind of set this up, um, 
in the early 80s, I was a student at Modesto Junior College in Modesto, California. I was a child development major. And at Christmas time, our main office for child development had this story up. And it is a folk tale for Germany and also in the Ukraine. And it's called The Legend of the Christmas Spider. Let's go to the first one here. Uh, long ago, all the women went around and was cleaning their house and getting it just perfect, getting it ready for the visit of the Christ child. And they went around, and they swept all the cobwebs down and chased all the spiders up into the attic. And as the women folk were getting everything decorated, getting their trees up and putting the candles on it and lighting the candles, the younger spiders were saying that they wanted to see the beautiful tree. And the older spiders said, oh no, you can't go down there and do that. You have to stay up here. But they all decided to wait, and once everybody was in a bed asleep, the spiders crept down and went and started looking at all the beautiful decorations on the Christmas tree. Well, spiders being spiders, when they done that, they left cobwebs all over the beautiful Christmas tree. And so when they left, they went back up into the attic and waiting for the, Christmas chi the Christ child to come. He came and he saw the beautiful tree and he saw all of the spider webs all over it and he knew that the spiders wasn't doing it to be bad or malicious or anything. And he didn't want to disappoint the, the women that worked so hard to get their tree ready. So he touched the cobwebs and when he touched the cobwebs they turned to silver and gold and legend says that's where we got the tinsel that we put on our trees every year so a lot of people in their trees somewhere they have a little tiny spider hidden in the Christmas tree <laughs> that's the legend of the Christmas spider <laughs> There we go. <laughs> and I'm also going to do this number here. Hey, that works too. Um, this is the first time we have ever done an instrumental together. And we practiced for this. And also the first time we have ever sang together um, in performance. So this is exciting. So you'll be, you'll be gracious, won't you? <laughs> Thank you. 
Got to turn my book sideways because the large print won't fit on a regular. Name. Cherish that wonderful name. 
other name can save or heal No other name can cleanse and fill That emptiness within your heart No other name but Jesus When all have come and gone That name will still live on So magnify it loud and strong The precious name of Jesus To this point, we've heard a lot of wonderful music, and um, I really feel like we've worshipped tonight, um, and some great readings that have just helped us to focus on Christmas and what it's really about. Um, at this time, we're going to transition just a little bit. Uh, we have a special speaker here tonight. He was here about seven years ago. Um, some of you might remember him. He's back with us. Um, so if you will please welcome with me uh, Reverend, is it Reverend? You Mister? Could, you could just call me Gus. Gus T. Breeze. It's all to you, Gus. Thank you so much, y'all. So great to be back with you. Oh, I just love it here. It's been so long since I've been graced by your presence and you've been graced by mine. I just wanted to share a message with you that the Lord has laid on my heart Oh, it's about the coming of Jesus and all that happened that first Christmas. And I just get blessed every time I share it. Now, are you a shouting church? Because I need you to be a shouting church, right? Because when I get blessed, I just got to give a Honolulu. Woo! I want to go there, right? 
Are you with me, church? Okay, so let me share what's been laid on my heart. So in the days leading up to the birth of Jesus, Joseph and Mary, well, they had to travel to Bethlehem. And Mary was expecting a child. And so Joseph put Mary on the donkey and they began a walking. And they walked that first day. And they walked that second day. And they walked that third day. And they walked through shady green pastures, rich and sweet. God led these children along. And through the waters cool to bathe their feet. God led these children along. Some through the water. And he led them sometimes through the flood. He led them sometimes through the fire. And, and where I come from, they also say that he led them by the cow chewing the cud. It's true. Yeah, I read it in the book, the good book. For 40 years he led them, and behold, Mary became very great with child. <laughs> Greater than any other pregnancy. But in every step of the way the Lord provided Never once did their clothes wear out. Never once did the sandals fall off their feet. Someone say, Honolulu! <laughs> Woo! I want to go there. <laughs> and behold, they came unto Bethlehem, and Joseph led Mary and the donkey to that first inn. And behold, the donkey turned away. And Joseph beat that donkey. <laughs> and so he led that donkey on to the second inn. And behold, that donkey turned away again. And Joseph beat that donkey. And so he led them on to another inn. And behold, that donkey turned away again. And Joseph beat that donkey. And behold, the Lord opened that donkey's mouth. And she saith unto Joseph, Why hast thou beaten me these last three times? Can't you see there's no room in the inn? And behold, the Lord opened Joseph's eyes, and he could see. And the donkey led them on to the stable. And the Lord said, go in you and your family. And not only did the Lord bring them into the stable, but he brought all the animals unto this place. Two by two, he brought them in. Every domestic animal, every wild animal, every creature that has the breath and life in it. And he brought them all into the stable. And when they were all gathered in, he shut the door. Some would say, Honolulu. And there were shepherds nearby in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, one of their sheep wandered off. And what were those shepherds to do? Well, those bad shepherds, they had some of them in the mix. And, and they said, who cares? Just let it go. We've got 99 over here. <laughs> but there was a good shepherd that day. And he left the 99 behind and he went after that one lost sheep. Yes, and, and on his way, he saw that a lion had carried it off. And do you think that shepherd was scared of the lion? I tell you, no, sir. And so behold, he went out and he struck down that lion and he rescued that sheep. And as he was bringing it back, do you know, a bear came and carried off that sheep. <laughs> and do you think that shepherd was scared of the bear? I tell you, no, sir. And so he went and he struck down that bear. And then a giant came and took that sheep and began to taunt him. And do you think that shepherd was scared of that giant? I tell you, no, sir. And so he found five smooth stones. And he put them in a sling. And he struck down that giant with a sling and a stone. And he rescued that sheep. Can I get a Honolulu? Woo! I want to go there. And that shepherd, well, he was bringing that sheep back. And suddenly an angel appeared. And the glory of the Lord shone around him. And this time the shepherd was scared. But he said unto the angel, Are you for us 
or for our enemies. <laughs> and the angel said, neither, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Now be strong and courageous. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And then the angel said again, he is not here. He is somewhere else. Now come and see the place where he lay. And so that shepherd hurried off and he found the stable filled with all of those animals. <laughs> and he also found Mary and Joseph and the babe all lying in the manger. It was a big manger. <laughs> a big manger. <laughs> and after seeing this, he spread word to everyone who would listen. And everyone was amazed at how big... <laughs> That manger was. <laughs> Can I get a Honolulu? <laughs> and it came to pass that wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and they said unto Herod, Where is the one who's been born king of the Jews? We saw his star. We've come to worship him. And behold, an evil spirit came upon Herod. And in his anger, he picked up a spear and he hurled at him, trying to pin them to the wall. But those wise men were too wise for him. And they eluded him twice. <laughs> and seeing that King Herod was not going to be any help in finding the babe, these wise men continued on their journey. And lo and behold, the Lord led them by a pillar of cloud by day. <laughs> he led them. And by a pillar of fire at night, he led them. And they journeyed through the wilderness both day and night. And when they saw the place where the child and his mother was, they were overjoyed. And these three wise men came unto the child and they offered their gifts. And behold, the first one gave five talents of gold. And Joseph responded and he said, Well done. <laughs> My good and faithful servant. <laughs> and behold, the second one came and offered up two talents of gold. And again, Joseph said, well done, my good and faithful servant. But then came that last wise man, the least wise of them all. <laughs> and all he had to offer was five loaves <laughs> and two fish. The scraps of a small lunch. And Joseph shouted, quick, bring the best robe. Bring the brightest multicolored coat we have and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and kill the fat calf. Let's have a feast and celebrate. And behold, the people made so much noise that the sound was heard far away. Someone say Honolulu. And when Mary saw all of this, she treasured up all these things. And she returned, glorifying and praising God for all she'd seen and heard. And she pounded them into her heart. <laughs> the word of the Lord. Honolulu. Thank you. It's been a privilege. How in the world do you follow that? <laughs> you don't. We all just sing together. Let's sing. Oh, come all ye faithful. We have a pianist coming. The words will be on the screen. Start with verse 1, please. Come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, ye, oh, come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold ye, born the King of Angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, 
We thank all of you for coming. We know many of you have traveled from afar to hear our special speaker tonight. We thank you for coming and knowing that you were traveling, we thought we might want to give you a little something to nibble on before you have to travel back home. So we'll be having some light refreshments when we're finished with the service tonight. And please stick around. We want you to come and just have fellowship with us. Let's stand as we pray together. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to spend time together celebrating the beauty and the wonder of Christmas. The story that we've heard both from scripture and in song and in stories told, we're thankful that there was that day all those years ago that you came as a babe in order to live among us to show us how it can be done and to demonstrate for us that there's a father that loves us and gave us his very best. And we in turn want to do the same, to give our lives to you. Fathers, take our lives and use us, we pray, to spread the news to those around us that this isn't just a season of family get-togethers and gift-giving and gift-receiving, but it's a time of celebrating the beginning of the message of salvation, of Jesus coming as a babe in order to live and knowing that he was going to die for us. We thank you for that gift. Father, for all that you've done, we give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you for the food that has been brought for us. Give us a time of fellowship together. and May all that we do please and glorify you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.